everyone! So today I am going to talk to you a little bit about Northanger Abbey and the influences on Northanger Abbey. Um, I have it here in this beautiful vintage edition. I'm just gonna gush about this edition a little bit for a second because I absolutely love these editions. Um, they're the perfect size, like, to fit in your hand. They're a little bit squarer than the normal paperback. Um, they have French flaps and gorgeous end papers which match other editions in this collection. Um, I'm absolutely head over heels in love with these. I really want to get the Bronte ones, but I'm trying to resist. Um, but these are hands down my favorite editions of Jane Austen. So I reread Northanger Abbey back in December, and it really encouraged me to finally read some of the books that I knew directly influenced this novel. This is the first novel that Jane Austen wrote, and it was one of the later ones published, that's why the publication date um, will show as much later as, than some of the others. But you can really see um, as a young author Jane Austen's kind of like it's it's very much a novel about novels. You can see Jane Austen kind of thinking, is the novel a worthy medium for me to be writing in? Because the novel was still quite new at that time. And she directly references a couple of the novels that I'm going to talk about. And then there's another one which is almost a precursor to Northanger Abbey. It kind of mocks the, the same things that Northanger Abbey does. I don't think quite as effectively as Northanger Abbey, but it's definitely a direct influence. So the first book I'm going to talk about is The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. And I don't have my copy anymore um, because I had one of the older Oxford editions and I want to replace it. So I'll insert a picture here of The Mysteries of Udolpho while I talk about it. Uh, so The Mysteries of Udolpho is kind of this gothic romance and it's very long-winded. Like it, it really <laughs> It really is. I, I read it earlier in the year and I mean it was it was thoroughly enjoyable and it was very entertaining and you can really see where the protagonist of Northanger Abbey, Catherine Moreland, uh, kind of gets influenced by it because there's there's you know bandits and getting locked up in an old gothic Italian castle and all kinds of like pretty preposterous situations. Um, but it's it's just it's such kind of a good fun kind of read. I would definitely recommend it. Um, I would maybe if you're new to classics, I would not recommend it <laughs> to start with. Um, it's it's very much a bit of a slog. Um, I will warn you. I know I was actually read it with Tanya over at List Obsessed Reader and Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts, and I finished it in January. Tanya finished it in February and I think Jean is still working on it because it is it is a bit of a slog and I can totally understand although we do like to tease Jean a little bit um, when, we, when we suggest buddy reads um, but it is it is very entertaining you kind of just have to go in and kind of go in with a bit of a mocking attitude towards it but you can definitely see the influences in I mean Catherine Moreland talks about Anne Radcliffe constantly in this book. So you can definitely see what the direct influences. So another one that directly like and I think this one is mentioned I can't remember exactly but I'm pretty sure that Matthew Lewis's The Monk is mentioned. Now I prefer this to The Mysteries of Udolpho. This is an over 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 the top gothic kind of absurd plot. It, it deals with a monk who falls from grace and like basically it's just it's got the devil in it. Like literally Lucifer himself is in this book. Um, this caused quite a scandal when it was published but and I, I, I feel like it was mentioned in Northanger Abbey but it definitely definitely influenced it and I really enjoyed this. It's such an over-the-top read. Um, you kind of have to go in with a bit of kind of a mocking attitude <laughs> towards it. Like you have to understand that Lewis was not being in any way shape or form serious about this novel. Um, it's kind of just a good romp and it's really engrossing. I think I read it in like two days. It's absolutely hilarious and you just kind of sit there and you're like once you get past a bit of the language I will warn you if you are oh no not this one. This is not the one that I was thinking about. Um, the next one female Quixote has some some interesting um, like punctuation and the way that the capitalization and that can be a bit jarring when you're trying to read it but it is very entertaining and you can definitely see like the over-the-top dungeons 
packs with the devil, selling your soul that um, Catherine Morland is reading about in Northanger Abbey. And then the final book that I have to talk about, which I clearly spoiled a little bit, is Charlotte Lennox's The Female Quixote. This is a precursor to Northanger Abbey. And it's very much deals on the same themes. The protagonist, Arabella, um, leads a fairly secluded life, much like Catherine Morland. And when she's introduced to society, because she spent so much of her time reading, like Catherine Morland, she makes a lot of missteps because she's guided by what she reads and thinks that what she reads um, constitutes what reality is. So she, she believes in these very extravagant honor codes that she reads in her romances and in these very absurd modes of conduct for men and women in her society which are not the reality and she's she's a very much you're laughing at Arabella in this book um, not which is a definite difference between Catherine Moreland. Um, Catherine Moreland you kind of sympathize with you understand a little better I mean you kind of laugh at her a little bit but ultimately your sympathies lie with her with Arabella you're just like really Arabella really I did laugh quite a bit when I was reading The Monk because I had read uh, The Female Quixote before and Arabella is constantly afraid of being ravished by people. And in The Monk, Matthew Lewis is, mentions quite a few times people being ravished and it just made me laugh because it really kind of rounded out um, Arabella's character by reading some of the romances and kind of over the top things that she had read. It really is a fantastic work. I think I only rated this three stars but it, it does allow for a much better understanding of the uh, Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen and I think if you really like Jane Austen and if you really enjoy kind of finding out where influences are and seeing kind of intertextuality, reading books that influenced uh, later authors is always a really great thing to do. So those are just some books that influenced Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey, which I think is probably one of my favorites now, now having reread it. It wasn't at the time when I read it, but having so much more intertextuality really deepened my enjoyment of it. So I thought I'd just do a little video about that and share that with you guys, and I will see you in another video. Bye!